Hello and welcome. This is Psych 102 Past Questions Review. In this video, we are going to solve 100 questions. I mean 100 questions. And it's going to be fully multiple choice. This is the part one. The part two is also going to be 100 questions with combination of multiple, that is a feeling, multiple choice questions, and then true or false questions. So with this one, it's fully multiple choice questions, and we are going to answer 100 questions. I'll be releasing three sets of videos. But if I'm not able to do, I'll actually bring you the second part, okay? So in case you do not get any notification, you can come to my channel and check for the part two. All right. So before I start, I want to be snappy. On uh, 21st September, we are marking on a trip to Akosombo, which has been titled Yanko Akosombo after exams. So after the exams, I believe you want to join us so we can go and have fun together at Akosombo. So we have unique packages which are designed to meet your needs. We have what 250, which is the normal package. It comes with what comes with food, snacks, transportation, and drink. That is VVIP. VIP also costs 350, which comes with food, snacks, transportation, drinks. Then you choose between the places I'm coming to mention: either boat ride, canopy walk, and then the horse also what. Uh, ride and then we also have VVIP, which which is going to cost you f um, 450, which comes with all the things I've mentioned. And you can choose two places, two um, activities a uh, canopy walk, um, horse ride, and then boat ride. So you choose two of them that it's what the VVIP. Um, we are going to these places. It starts with Peninsula Resort at Akosomo, a very nice hotel be over there and then we're also going to Adomi Bridge you go to Shy Hills where the monkeys are you're going to have fun there and also go to the last place that's what Adomi Bridge please if you want to participate or make payment you can contact uh, Monica Reigns on 0 seven zero nine zero seven okay or you contact the numbers that i've listed here and get in touch so let's get started we are going to solve 100 questions so no time to waste and i want to also say that um i have some unique packages okay that is um we have packages i have around these services so if you are interested you can get in touch you want to travel outside or go and study outside okay i offer those, those services so before as i start let me continue with it and 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 in case maybe you are interested okay the places are the places are we have office in what lesenberg we have germany we also have what canada okay these places and if you want to study out abroad like places like usa canada or uk you can also get in touch with us we'll help you with that if you also want a passport or passport renewal reach out to us that's a global assurance travels okay you can check our website at global assurance travels um, dot com and you get all our packages there or you any contact me i'll sort you out so let's get started number one so one key attribute of learning is that a it changes over time b it changes due to or it it changed due to learning okay it changed due to what learning is due to what experience change due to what learning is due to what experience that's what the b and c says that helps to punish people and d says it helps to reduce it helps reduce what forgetting forgetting right so the answer is a which is what one key attribute of learning is that it changes over time so learning is a process right it occurs over what over time and follows a process and it is not what a single event so it changes over time so let's move on number two which of the which of these scientists is linked to operant conditioning all right so we have what we've gone uh cola right we have um, bf skinner we have ivan pavlov and then we have abed bandura so the answer is what bf skinner so bf skinner actually what he is really linked with operant condition um from 19 what 
he was born in the year 1904 to 1990 and he's referred to the founder of the operant condition and his work is frequently cited in the in connection with this topic right that's operant condition number three an individual sees that his colleague has been jailed for for stealing he decides never to steal in his life um what type of learning has occurred here we have a complex learning b operant conditioning c modeling and we have the word uh vicarious vicarious what learnings and so the answer is what vicarious learning so this is what this is also called learning by observation it is okay it occurs right when individuals observe the behaviors of others and learn from the consequences of those behaviors okay so when you observe someone behavior and learn from it okay someone steals and has been jailed he decided not to steal it is called it is called um vicarious what learning vicarious number four kofi was wondering how it will feel like to touch a live power cable he touched one and is and experience a painful electric shock he decided never never to touch a live cable a live power cable again this change in behavior is is a result of a operant condition b classical conditioning c uh, the disassociate learning and then d ha what habituation so the answer is what operant condition when you talk of operant condition it's where what um you look at the scenario here kofi was what he 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 touched one he touched what he touched one um keyboard and what and got shocked right and decided never to touch it again okay so this is what as a result of what an um an operant conditioning so imagine a student who often disrupt classes by what by walking 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 out of 10 right so if the teacher consistently reprimands the student that's the negative consequence every time they interrupt it's every time they interrupt the students will likely learn to stop interrupting in the class okay in the in the future to avoid what the reprimand so let's say like there's teaching on going on and every day a, 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 a student decides to interrupt with the class a day that the teacher punishes him most of them will not like to do that because they they know that when they when they try that they will be punished right so this is really linked to what operant conditioning so let's look at number two and uh, number five abba is a two year old anytime she she is taken to a hospital a nurse in green uniform gives her a painful injection after five after five such visit in the hospital after five after five such visit in the hospital abba now begins to cry when she sees anyone in a green uniform in classical conditioning theory abba's crying upon seeing anyone in the green uniform is called a um unconditioned stimulus b conditioned stimulus c un unconditioned response and d conditioned response so the answer is unconditioned stimulus that's what unconditioned stimulus that's e so um so the painful injection which typically so let's now take them one after the other and explain explain them okay so the 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 painful injection which which naturally causes what it is what the painful injection which naturally causes her to cry so that is the un, un, unconditioned stimulus when it talk about unconditioned response i best crying in response to the injection right that is the the unconditioned response and then we have what the conditioned stimulus that c s there's the green uniform the green uniform which typic which what which was initially which which was initially neutral and became what associated with painful injection after repeat visit and then conditioned re responses are about crying when sees anyone in green uniform without an injection so let's look at the question again i think the answer we need to so it says what about crying upon seeing anyone in green uniform so that becomes what 
that becomes the last option I mentioned. That's what conditioned response. Conditioned response. That's what uh, the right the conditioned response. So Alpha's crying when any time she sees what someone in a uniform. Okay, crying when she see anyone in green uniform. Okay, even without what an injection. So that's what we call what, the uh, conditioned response. So forgive me for. The first answer I choose, right? Let's move on. Number six. Number six. So, you know, the idea is that I'm not just doing a past question with you, but I'm actually we're trying to explain some of the concepts for you. So in case you've not be able to even learn or probably sit down, you can actually have a fair idea about it. Do you get it? So make sure you watch the video to an end and share share the video with your friends. If you also want to support this channel, you are welcome because I, I started this preparation since morning i just finished right now after two you get it from morning to this time all this time i've been on these questions uh just to bring you this thing so if you want to support the door is open you can reach out to me because it's not easy we spend a lot of time on these things number six um number six says that in question five above abes condition behavior can be eliminated through the process of what a distinction b extension extension c um extinction and then d pre, uh, what, um prediction so in abe's case in abe's case if she repeatedly sees an individual in green uniform without receiving injection the association between the green uniform that is what the condition stimul uh, what, stimulus and then the painful injection, which is what the unconditioned stimulus weakens, right? So over time, her crying in response to the uh, green uniform, that is what the CL, the conditioned response, will diminish and may what eventually disappear. So the process of weakening and eliminating condition response is called uh, the extinction. So the only way we can what, eliminate the pain is called what, the extinction. The extinction. Okay, so number f that was what number six extinction. That's C. Number seven, information is transferred from the working memory into the long term memory through the process of A, chunking B, uh, elaborative reverse uh, what rehearsal. C maintenance rehearsal and then D active rehearsal. So the answer is what elaborative rehearsal. This is in your slides. Please check it. It is there. So I want to explain to you again. Number eight. All the following are learn learner factors that can influence learning. Except A motivation. B practice. C learning environment. D mental health of the learner. So you know when you go through your slides. All of the motivation is part. We have a learning environment and we have what mental health of the learner, but there's nothing like practice, right? So the answer becomes practice. Number eight, Herman, uh, Herman what? Ebingos, okay? Herman Ebingos use meaningless three letters combinations to test how well he could what remember things. These these three letter. The, these three letter combinations were known as A, nonsense syllables, B, active words, C, memory cues, and D, uh, prediction words. So the answer is what, nonsense syllables. Nonsense syllables. So he used what? A ban what? A bingos, right? Use three meaningless letter, letter combination, right? So that is it. So it's what? It is what a pioneering what is a pioneering what psychologist in the study of memory he used nonsense syllables which 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 are what meaningless three letters combination like what t u v or z a k in his experiment to study pure memory processes without the influence of prior knowledge or associations number ten your ability to remember the factual information, such as the name of the first president of Ghana, is the function of A, short, mem short term memory, B, working memory, th C, sharp memory, and then D, we have what? Declarative memory. So the answer is what? Declarative memory. Declarative memory. Number 11, Peter is able to recognize 
Peter is able to recognize a criminal who snatched who snatch his phone some, some time back because he can still remember the exact place and the exact time the incident took place. This is a function of his what? A, um, procedural memory. B, semantic memory. C, uh, ep what? Episodic what? memory. And then D, working memory. The answer is episodic memory, right? So the episodic memory, when you are able to re remember the exact place and then the exact time that the event took place, is called what? the episodic memory. Okay. So let's look at number. Okay, maybe in the exams today can give you this example. This is the kind of memory. Okay, this kind of memory enables us to what? go back, go back in time and recollect specific thoughts, as experiences we had at a specific place or time. Example, recollection of how you learned the definition of psychology. This is called what? the episodic memory. Number 12. Nancy is able to remember a word out of a list of words she learned previously because it was the only word that was unusual to her when she was learning the list. This is called A, the unusual word effect. B, the von Ristoff effect, C, the retrospective effect, and then D, the only word effect. So this is called what? the von Ristoff what? Ristoff effect. The von Ristoff effect. Okay. Okay. So. So this is what? This is the tendency to remember unusual material better better than more common what words okay that's what the the von restorf effect the von restorf effect let's look at number 10 and number 13 the psychological process of punishing uh, punish punishing out painful experiences from a memory is known as what a repression b sub, suppression c uh, regression in the erosion so this is what repression 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 is what the psychological process of punishing out painful express experiences from what from our memory sorry 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 I'm, I'm taking it again what the proof the psychological process of pushing out painful memory okay not punishing is pushing out so in your quest to push out painful memory uh, painful experiences from your memory is called what? repression repression so number 14 in memory studies proactive interference is where a new material increases forgetting the old materials b new materials have to recall to recall old materials c old materials and new materials are mixed together and the old material prevent recollection of new material so the answer is d so in memory studies proactive interference what interference is what is where the old material prevent recollection of new material number 15 a group of a group of boys embark on efforts to change behaviors the behaviors attitudes and perception of other groups in in a rival hall of residence this is known as a conformity conformity b uh, persecution c persecution or c persuasion and d social influence and the answer is what social influence for example modern campaigns such as what gender rights gay rights religious rights and etc campaigns are what targeted at influencing and also changing people's what uh, perception or attitudes towards or certain groups mm -hmm. so this is what we call social influence number 16 the infamous the infamous conformity experiment by solomon ask okay ask it was found that so a pressure from what the majority group had no social influence b pressure from the majority group could affect the, the a person to conform c the pressure from the pressure from the majority only works on a vulnerable people on a vulnerable pe people and the 
pressure from the majority group helps prevent what conformity the answer is what uh, b that's what pressure from a majority group could affect a person's a person to conform so in what in infamous in the infamous conformity experiment by solomon uh, uh, ask okay it was found that the pressure from what a majority group could affect a person to conform when you are in the midst of majority group it could definitely have an has an impact it could have what an impact on you right that pressure could have an impact on you number 17 question does not believe in the existence of goose one day his friend shows him a video of goose captured on cctv cctv camera right after seeing the video, that's the evidence, Kwesi now believes that ghost exists. In social influence studies, this scenario demonstrates A, supernatural influence, B, pure influence, C, um, informational influence, and D, inf influence by evidence. This is called informational influence, where you do not believe something, and then you encounter or experience it and now begin to believe, or if you do not believe in God, okay? Or you do not believe that God exists, and you had one-on-one -on -one encounter with God. This is where this is what we call what the informational what experience. Experience. I, I myself personally, I've had that encounter before. So if I see someone saying that God does not exist, I I I doubt. Uh, I I mock or probably laugh because I've seen him with my naked eye before. Do you get it? So if I'm talking about God, I know who he is. Do you get it? That is how the whole thing is. Let's look at. Uh, so this is what it says. That uh, this is the suggestion that people conform when pre when what presented with what with actual evidence about what the reality of certain evidence or situation by other people, right? So that is what we call what the informational evidence. I've had that informational evidence myself before. Okay, when people are talking about these presidents okay i've seen all of them with my naked eye before and eh? so if someone is saying that okay saying something about them okay or saying something negative or probably saying some good thing about them and because of my experience i can say that yes it is true because i've experienced it even though maybe i doubted it before let's look at number 18 a person may disapprove of killing another human human being no matter what the, no matter who they are however when trust when trust in the middle of a war such a person may kill in order to survive this type of conformity is guided by a the war could be situational norms c pressure uh, peer pressure and then d killing by circumstance so this is called a situational norms situational norms you didn't intend to kill but because of the situation that you find yourself in you intend to what to 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 actually what defend yourself and the only way you can deserve yourself is to kill and survive that is called what situational norms number 19 um some psychologists regard self-esteem as an enduring personality characteristic this view is often called is is self as what treats self-esteem be global what global self-esteem c domain specific self-esteem and the uh, special self-esteem so the answer is what a that's what treat self-esteem treat what self-esteem so the so psychologists okay regard self-esteem as what as enduring personality this is a characteristic of what a treat self-esteem number number 20 which of the following is not an extra sensory perception you remember what we did in level 100 extra when we talk of extra sensory perception we talk about what the um we talk about the ability to perceive information without using the known five senses that is what the the the, the sight the hearing the taste the touch and the smell okay they are called extra sensory perception so we are talking about what, which of them is not really part of them and let's look at them we have what a, a graphology we have b psychokinesis c clairvoyance and then d precognition so when we talk of 
uh, clairvoyance is the ability to gain information about an object person location or an event without using what your senses okay it is called what clairvoyance and and precognition is the ability to perceive or predict future events okay and psychokinesis is the ability to move okay or manipulate objects without the mind okay so we are talking about all of them okay so which of them is so it's not an extra uh, what extra so all of them are extra we we perceive them as outside what the five senses okay when you are predicting future you know it's something that doesn't really match up with your thinking and other stuff but when you talk of graph graphology it involves what analyzing the handwriting or what of other people okay mm -hmm. rather than what perceiving information beyond the normal senses so when you look at someone's handwriting to predict who the person is or why the person can become is called what the graphology so the answer here is what graphology number 21 upon meeting peter for the first time thinks that he might what, be an outgoing and intelligent person judging from the shape of his head so james conclusion is what so James, upon meeting Peter for the first time, thinks that he might what, be an outgoing and intelligent person. So, judging from the person's the shape of the person, the person's head. Last semester, we learned these things. When you you predict someone's future or maybe someone's behavior based on what the shape of the person's head is called phrenology. Okay, so it's not forensic psychology or graphology. No, is it palmistry? But it is called. What, it is called palmistry is where what uh, you look at someone's hand to predict and which will be similar so the deeper way that you become rich you become poor or you die early you have some sickness that is called palmistry so it is what phrenology number two so revise your level 100 note too please and make sure you also learn because if you have not learned these things we are talking about it will be something very it will be cumbersome a baby brain it's a sequel that's so market amount but make sure you go through but if you don't understand some of these questions to help you understand that's why i'm explaining them so let's go we are learning together plato is known in the theory of psychology for his idea in a nativism right b dualism c, uh, c existentialism and then d we have both a and b so the answer is what both a and b that's what nativism and what dualism dualism so it's known for the two okay so plato is known for his idea idea is what nativism okay that's nativism so they believe that certain skills or abilities are in it and then dualism dualism is also what the theory that the mind and the body are distinct and what separable like number 23 in general in general regard in uh, what dash is what is the general regard as the father of modern day psychology e edward uh teacher tishna right edward tishna b william wont c uh, gustav fechner right and then and then we have the john b Weston. okay it's not a Ghanaian name so forgive me some in pronouncing here and yami chromodin so I pronounce it how I, I can pronounce. So the name is what William Wont, okay? William Wont. That is it. Number 24. The behaviorists believe that the appropriate subject matter and methodology to be used to study the to study psychology respectively should be dash and dash. A observable behavior and observation. B we have for we have um, observable behavior and objection intro introspection. No, C. We have what observable behavior and pattern analysis. No, and then D. We have ob observable behavior and psychokinesis. The answer is A. Observable behavior and observation. That's what the behaviorists believe in. Number twenty-five. Which of the following statement is true? A. The ID is completely uh, conscious. B. The super ego is completely uh, conscious c the ego is completely unconscious and d the ego separate operates at what at the conscious pre-conscious and what 
an unconscious level so the answer is d why because the ego you know the ego the ego is the character of a child like a, a womanizer any woman he sees he want to approach okay that is what the the ego and if he, not, he has not even gotten the the person the whole turn on that if a child wants to eat a uh, uh, a milo now when you milo ni and then i say he wants to take some lollipop some toffee and you don't give the charge he will not stop crying that is what the child is being dominated by or the ego but i want to talk of what the super ego uh, sorry the uh, sorry that's the id we are, i'm talking what I, sp- I explained earlier is the id but the ego is where maybe you, you, you the child thought that okay i need to you realize that oh you need to womanize but you realize you have a wife okay so probably ideally you had you had a, you had what the opportunity to maybe uh um probably propose to three ladies uh-huh, at a go or probably like meet three ladies but because of that say so, okay because of my my woman okay let me only go with one add one more chick to my woman okay even do you decided to do but you didn't do it in SS. okay this is cool what because you are you are so you are stuck between the id and then the super the super ego okay this is where now the child wants to eat uh, uh the child wants what you want some uh, milo or probably like the child want to want sugar you realize that the sugar is not good for the child's head so instead of giving her the full sugar you decided to give her a little drop or like just like something a spoon of sugar to 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 taste do you get it this is called the ego and then the super ego is where you you decide that okay this the super ego is where like you decide not to do at all yes you realize that it is good it is good to humanize but after realizing that you have a woman or you have a guy you say okay then i'm not doing it again do you get it so so people that are that are being dominated by their super ego are morally what uh, 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 cultured like there are people who who move with principles values do you get it uh-huh. so always that governs them their super ego governs them but people who are moved with their ego are people that okay they said wine is not okay or they say what alcohol is not okay me i won't take much alcohol let me take what half okay the whole maybe that glass and i don't take the full glass let me take half but somebody who is dominated by his ego or bed no one 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 a or bed no one way na idea man or bed or bed or woman we crowd ben no you give her the bottles like seven bottles sir. if it's not done in the town and there are some people some of you or some of us like that some of us are like that so who pb bi yena so why nya hun told that eh and and you, you you nothing tells you that what you are doing is wrong. You are being dominated by your ID. You are being dominated by your ID. But sometimes if it comes okay, don't do it. Okay, you do it like minimize it, and that is where your 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 ego comes in. But when it tells you not to go ahead or cry, you are being dominated by your super ego. So which of them? Okay. So the answer here is that what the ego. Okay, the ego operate what operate at the conscious pre-conscious and uniconscious right so the ego no on what that if you feel between the ego um the id and then the super ego do you get the answer number 26 i decided to explain this it's a tactical word and you can bring some something like this so you if you understand it you you the better it or because it's level 100 things too so you've not studied them so i'm reminding you of the things you study in level 100. number 26 the structuralists believe that the appropriate subject matter for psychology should be a functional the function of the mind b the structure of the mind c unconscious experience and d conscious experience so you know structuralism they believe that psychology should study what the structure of the mind okay the structure of what the mind that is what the structuralists would believe in we did you did it in level 100 okay let's go how the mind is formed okay the structure all right let's look at number 27 which of the following statement is incorrect a operational operationalism states that prediction should be free so that researchers can perform tests that will either confirm or disapprove these predictions it's true uh, b invariance in sci- in this scientific assumption in the invariance is the scientific assumption that 
casual relationship between the same event do not change over time or location. That's also true. And then object objectivity refers to what? Refers to the systematic allocation of data, development of theories, and making predictions so researchers can understand and agree on issues. No, I don't believe in this. This is that what republic uh, replication uses what direct observation, direct observation as what as basis for what for understanding natural events as well as what a systematic gathering of what of data to confirm or disapprove predictions made. The answer so this is also correct. So the answer is what D uh, sorry C that's what objectivity. So objectivity in, in, in research specifically means being unbiased and impartial in collecting what in, in, in collecting and interpreting data rather than focusing on development of theories and making predictions. So do you get it? Let's look at number 28. Does develop test and measure intellectual ability or academic potential, help researchers enhance teaching methods, the learning process and motivation in the classroom is called A, School of Psychology, B, Educational Psychology, C, Cognitive psychologists and the developmental psychologists. This is called educational psychology. So they develop tests that measures what intellectual ability or academic potentials help researchers to what enhance research methods and also what in the learning process and motivation in the classroom. Number twenty nine. Psychologists study one of the, one of the, one of several what basic processes such as what such as sensation, learning perception. Uh, memory, communication, emotion, and etc. And frequent use of animals and other humans as their experimental what, subjects. So E, B, biological psychologists, B, experimental psychologists, C, community psychologists, and D, industrial and organizational psychologists. So the answer is experimental psychologists. So they study what? They, 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 are, they study one of the one of what the several basic processes such as what sensation learning perception memory communication emotion and all these stuff and they use what animals and other what humans as their experimental subjects let's look at number 30 dash is the defense mechanism which involves excluding excluding from conscious awareness Awareness memories that are that are too frightening or painful. A regression, B suppression, uh, C sublimation, D repression. So the answer is uh, what repression. D repression. So repression is what a defense mechanism which involves excluding from what uh, un unconscious awareness or mem uh, awareness memories. That are too frightening or painful. Is suppression. Number thirty-one. Paul is having an extramarital affair, feeling guilty about the incident. He be he begins what to constantly accuse his wife of being unfaithful to him. Paul is adopting to. Paul is adopting a defense mechanism called a reaction formation. B sublimation. C uh, rationalization and the uh, projection. So the answer is what projection. Projection. This is where what projection is a defense mechanism where an individual attributes their own unacceptable thoughts or feelings to someone else. Okay. It's like when you were kids, eh? I don't want to even talk about this. <laughs> when I talk about this, I to be so you let's proceed. Um. When you make the E, then you, you let me know. I'll tell you this story. Number 32, choose the old one from the option below. A, J, A, B, what, A, J, B, Watson, B, Edward, Thorn, Thorn, Thorn Dyke, right? Uh, C, Ivan Pavlov, and D, Alfred Adler. So the person, the old one here is what? Is Edward Thorn Dyke. You see? Um, JB, JB Watson, Ivan Pavlock, and then what? And, and Alfred, what? Alfred um, Adler are all associated with what? Behaviorism and classical conditioning. But 
uh, sorry so the um the likes of what jb what jb watson edward tondike and what ivan pavo they also assisted with what but be a vera be and what classical condition while what, afraid adler is also known for his work in what uh psychology okay Okay, Edward Thorndike. Edward Thorndike is also part okay, but we have for Alfred. Alfred. Mm, so, so please hold on with the answer. Alfred, what? Alfred Adler is what known for his work, and and it's not associated with that behaviorism. So all the things we have mentioned, okay. They are all associated with what? With behaviorism and, and classical conditioning. But Alfred Adler, so the answer is what? Alfred Adler. The answer is what? Is, is, um, D is D. Let's look at number 33. Behavior, behavior is guided by subjective perception of the world and the need for personal growth. This is the theoretical perspective of the humanist. Okay, the answer is the humanist. They believe in personal growth, right? Number thirty-three. So the humanist. Okay, let's let's look at the humanist perce uh, per perception or perspective. The the humanist would emphasize on personal growth, self-actualization, and subjective what subjective perception of the world as what as a guiding behavior. Thirty-four. Which of the following is a new uh, Freudian? So we have Charles Darwin, we have Abraham Maslow, we have what Carl Rogers, and then we have Carl Carl Jung. Carl Jung. So the answer is Carl Jung. So apart from Sigmund Freud, okay, other scholars were part of what the psych psychoanalytic what school school, which includes what uh, Carl Jung, Anna F uh, Freud, and what Eric Eric what Erickson. 35 which of the following is an example of associative learning okay we have latent learning but b observational learning c insight learning and d classical conditioning so uh, associative what associative learning is also known as what classical conditioning so classical conditioning is a type of associative learning where a neutral stimulus becomes what associated with the unconditioned stimulus to produce a condition response so classical condition is a type of learning where where you start what you start to associate one with what one with the other for example developing a negative attitude towards what to, towards a particular advert on tv due to what due to the condemnative the condemnation of that advert by both parents anytime it is shown so when you decide when it is you 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 you, you you grew some attitude okay towards a certain what certain thing okay based on what based on 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 on, on how you've been hearing people talk about it is what is called the classical conditioning or uh, probably if you would if you hear a bell every time you eat your favorite food eventually just hearing the bell might what might make you feel hungry even if there's what no food around you are learning to connect the bell that is what the neutral st stimulus with the food which which what n which n naturally what naturally makes you hungry so the bell eventually makes you feel hungry too so especially when the time we used to be in uh, primary schools where they used to ring the bells okay when it is nine o'clock or nine o'clock or ten o'clock for for first break the moment you hear the bell now you begin to what, feel hungry okay even if you are not hungry and the teacher is teaching <laughs> you will like the teacher to stop teaching so you can go and eat okay so it has been connected to the bell the moment you hear bell you feel hungry is that not it mm -hmm. there are some of you too that develop other things like some feelings and for certain things the moment you encounter that feelings or you come across it then you begin to long for it do you get it so that is what we call what it is called the classical conditioning 
Number 30 says, which of the following statement is true about classical condition? A, it involves voluntary involuntary response. B, it involves voluntary response. C, re- responses that are followed by subjective present consequences are likely to be what repeated. And D, we have what the re- uh, responses that are followed by subjective subject, sub- subjectively what unpleasant uh, consequences are unlikely to be what repeated. So the answer is what? The answer is, is A, what is what? It involves involuntary responses, okay? So classical conditionings deal with what? Automatic or involuntary what? Responses that, that are what, triggered by specific stimuli. Let's look at number 37. Mary has what? A condition whereby even at the age of 15, she still wets her bed. She has she has gone for treatment and currently uses a bed pad that causes a bell to what to ring the moment it is what moist moistened with what urine. After using this this set of what after what after using this setup for a while, Mary now Mary is now able to wake up at what at a full bladder without what without watching her bed. Mary's waking up waking up her full bladder is called what? A unconditioned stimulus stimulus, right? B condition stim uh, conditions response. C condition stimulus and then D we have what condition response. So the answer is what? Um you see Mary's waking up to a full bladder is is what is a learned reaction that occurs due to what condition process which involve a bad what smell right so it's what occurred due to a conditioning process okay so it's what condition what stimulus okay that's it okay so that's what we're on number the answer was rather the uh of cross check the answer is d so let me check the question again that's under juan under juan okay so it's juan juan okay so i've explained this Okay, Mary too has been explained. That's number. Okay, that's Mary, right? That's Mary, Mary. So it is what our the number thirty-seven is D, which is what condition stimulus, condition stimulus, stimulus, right? Number thirty-eight, a consequence that increases what the frequency of a behavior is called. The answer is what. The answer is called punishment. A consequence that that decreases what the frequency of a behavior. The consequences that decreases the frequency of a behavior is called punishment. That's D. Number um, so punishment is also known as what extinction, right? It decreases the frequency of a behavior by providing a consequence that discourages the behavior. Thirty nine. The frequency of a, what dash is the frequency of what dash is the frequency of a response increases because the response causes the removal of some sub subject subjectively what unpleasant uh, stimulus so i'm taking it again dash what is what the frequency of what the frequency of a response increases because that response causes the removal of some subjectively what some some subject subjectively unpleasant stimulus a we have what uh pan- the answer is what negative what reinforcement the answer is negative reinforcement it's what so let's look at number 40 joseph has what a stomach ulcer and and any time he experiences pain after eating certain foods he has to resort to medication. 
she had to resort to the to a medication he was given by his doctor to eliminate the pain taking the medicine is an example of a classical condition in b positive reinforcement c negative reinforcement and d what extension the answer is called negative reinforcement so in this case taking the medication removes the unpleasant stimulus which is called what, the pain which increases what the likelihood that joseph will use the medication again when experiencing similar what, pain 41 the tendency of an individual's performance on a tax to be improved due to the presence of what due to the presence of other individuals referred to as what is what we call social or facilitation is a tendency of an individual's performance on a tax to be improved due to what the presence of other others right so when people are, are around okay especially the guys when the women are around they overperform certain things okay or they they go extra mile as the same thing applies to the ladies so the tendency of what an individual's performance on a tax to be improved due to what the presence of others is called uh, social or social facilitation let's look at number 42 a group of students attended a whole week a whole what, week beach party in the in the course of what the celebration one student but be, began to drown in the sea and started screaming even though all students saw what what was happening no one jumped in the water to save him and he drowned later when the when the what investi uh, investigators began asking those who were pre present present why they did not help everyone seemed to be what to be saying that they thought others would have helped in social psychology this this situation is called what it is called uh, what diffusion of responsibility okay so when you talk of uh, let me explain what they are giving you social loafing we have what the individuation we have what diffusion of responsibility and what fundamental attribution attribution error so i'll explain all of them for you so we want to talk of social loafing this occurs when an individual exert less effort okay less effort in a group setting compared to when they are working alone so when some people are working alone they do well but when they are together they they begin to what perform low because they think that oh the work will go mm -hmm. so that's social loafing but when you talk of the individuation it refers to what the loss loss of self-awareness and individual accountability in group settings which can lead to what behavior that is what inconsistent with what one's usual values and norms for example people might what act in a way that they normally what wouldn't in large or anonymous groups right? when there's a political campaign some people are likely to do certain things that they wouldn't do in on their own so this is what we call what the individuation especially when there's demonstration people go to the extent of what attacking others raping others and stuff for okay so when they are they lose their self-esteem when they are what they are in the midst of people when they do other things they can go and even be pressing pressing people do you get it and then when you talk of diffusion of responsibility this is a phenomenon it occurs when individual in a group assumes that all others will take responsibility for a tax or an action leading to what to an in an action by everyone so in emergencies this can result in no one helping because the the each what each person thinks someone else will intervene mm? so you are in group everybody think oh this one there everybody someone will help so you you all begin to look at it and the situation that we the, the situation applies to the same thing right they were thinking what other people would do and when you talk of fundamental attribution error this is called what this is the tendency to overemphasize personal characteristics and ignore situational factors when explaining other people's behavior. For example, if someone fails to help in an emergency, one might attribute it to what to their lack of what comparison rather than what situation's complexity. So they are not part, with the exception of what the answer is what um what we mentioned. 
that's what the um, division of responsibility okay they are closely related to what we call bystander effect okay so look at the bystander effect let's look at number 43 johnson priest took test took a test in his school and got grade a he went he went bragging to his friends that he is smart and that's why he got an excellent grade the next semester he took a, a test in in a course taught by the same lecturer who who taught him the previous semester this time he got f within his friends he and when his friends asked him right when his friends asked him he said the lecturer gave him f because he didn't like him johnson praise behavior is an example of a self self what seven bias b screw you effect b, uh, c group think and then d diffusion of responsibility this is called what self serving bias this is the tendency to attribute our acute our successes to internal or personal factors and our failures to external that's all situational factors in other ways we would like to take credit for our, our triumphs but what but are more likely to blame others or circumstances for our shortcomings let's look at number 44 two criminals were arrested for robbery during police questioning during police questioning one of them explained that his friends committed the robbery because he is a criminal by nature but for him he did he did it because a voice in his head which he couldn't control kept telling him to what to do it this explanation this what this person's explanation reflects what he self serving by us no diffusion of responsibility no fundamental attribution error no and then we have what screw you up so so it is called fundamental attribution error so it is fundamental fundamental attribution error because the person the person is attributing his friend's behavior to what to their character that's a criminal criminal nature that's okay this person they were a criminal while attributing their own behavior to external factors like what voice voice a voice in his what his head like maybe spiritual matters oh for me dear the spiritual issue this is called what it is called a uh, fundamental attribution error let's look at number 45 ebenezer Uni is part of a group of students right advocate at at a group meeting there were there was what there was conscious that the group should target one one school property and destroy it so and destroy it and send a message to the school authorities about their displeasure with certain school policies officer fred thought that officer fred thought that that was what that was a bit too far but should she sh sh uh, what but sh but he should what he noticed that the morale in the group was high the morale in the group was high and his objection may destroy the morale so he didn't so he didn't what voice out his objection and agreed to go ahead with the plan even the awareness behavior reflects what we call what a the individuation b group thing c diffusion of responsibility and d social facilitation this is group thing. So the group thing occurs when individuals in the group prioritize harmony and one and consciousness over critical thinking and what experiencing what dissenting opinions. In this scenario, Officer Fred or Ebenezer Ewini refrain from what voicing objection to avoid disrupting the group's morale and leading to what collective decision that might what not have been have been the best course of action so it is called what group think number 46 one factor what one factor that can affect obedience is called is what a social status b social loafing and c social facilitation and d social social what uh in what inhabilitation right so this is called social status so social status can what affect individual behavior because because what people are, are more likely to be someone 
they perceive to be having higher authority, power or status. For example, if individual may what may be more inclined to follow orders from someone they see as what as a leader or someone in a position of what authority, such as a teacher boss or a police officer. This influence is stronger when what the person is giving orders or is seen as what legitimate and respected in the role. Um, uh, so when you talk of social loafing, it refers to what the tendency of an individual to put in a lot less effort when working in a group as compared to when they work alone. And then when you talk of social facilitation, it's what is a phenomenon where people perform better on tax, okay, on simple tax or tax they, they are good at when they are in the presence of others. So social facilitation, social what? Social rehabilitation is what is the opposite of what social facilitation, where people perform worse on complex or unfamiliar tax when others are watching. Okay, they do worse. That is what, especially people that have what inferiority com- complex when they are in front of people, they perform worse. This is called social what inhabitation. Social inhabitation. Forty-seven between semantic memory and what episodic memory dash. That is what. So we are going to look at it. So, a uh, episodic memory is more concerned with general information. No, it's not general information. B, a, a semantic memory is more concerned with information obtained at a specific place in a time, and then we have what. B, I uh, see what episodic what memory is more concerned with information obtained at a specific place. In a time, so this is correct, and then we have what semantic memory is more valid and long term. So the answer is see that episodic memory is more at concerned with what information obtained at a specific place in in time. Forty seven. George had an accident while driving his girlfriend's while driving to his girl's his girlfriend's place after sp- spending two weeks recovering from his physical injuries. Doctors noticed that he is unable to what, to remember anyone or anything that happened in his life before the accident, including his girlfriend. This is his own and his own periods. George can be said to be suffering from a uh, uh, what antero and uh, what anterograde what amnesia. All right, and then we have what. Retrograde what amnesia and what we have and then we see we have what the memory loss syndrome and the total memory loss. So we, this is called what retro retrograde what amnesia. This is not inability to record record recollect past events before a brain damage okay. And then we have what the anterograde what amnesia is what the ability to form new memories after a brain injuries occurs, right? Let's look at number 49. Information spreading model model of memory was developed by A. We have what Atkinson and what Atting what and Atkin, Atkinson. That's false. We have what Carkins and what Margins. That's 19, 1972. Wrong. We have what Ask an immigrant. That's 1968. Wrong. And we have what at what Atkinson and what and sh- and what and she and shift and shifting right 1968. That's correct. You okay? Atkinson, Atkinson and what and shifting. They are what it is correct. They are all having the same what. Uh, they are all having the same um names, right? Okay, but their same names are different. So that is it. So, the information processing model, okay, uh, it, it, they, according to the information processing model, how well we store and retrieve information is influenced by how much attention we pay to that information. That is what, at the sensory stage, and how well we reverse information at the short time, short term memory stage. Let's look at number 49. Okay, let's look at number 50. Wow, I've got it to 49. All of a sudden, I've moved back to 49. Okay, this should have been 50. 
Okay, so number 50. Number 50 says. 50 says that Pavlov, Pavlov, uh, Pavlov found that the most effective way of conditioning to occur was to maintain dash a, a short term, a short, a short time between what, between the presentation of two stimuli, the medium time, no long term. So it is what a short term between what the presentation of what two stimuli that's what the correct one so that's uh, 49 so that's number 50 i think um mm, okay ah uh, so i think this is it I've, I've already done this okay no 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 i've not i've not Yes, yes, I've done this. Okay, so this is it. Mm, a time presentation stimuli. Okay, yes. Yeah, so I think I have the information here. No. Okay, so let's look at number fifty. That was. Okay, so because because of how the whole thing is, I'm bringing you part two. Okay, I'm dividing it. The hundred questions I can't bring you all. So I'm dividing it into two and bringing you the, the next one. So meaning that I'm going to have like four videos or three. The maximum should be four. So watch out. Check. check. I'll be uploading all of them at the same time. Okay. God bless you.